I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming. Stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. We do not trust any friends or family members. I repeat, do not trust friends. Like people who um, work with animals, like, signed off on, like, a... Like, we think this is sick. Like, they, <laughs> they like, have protests from, I, like, fucking butchers and, like, you know... I, sh- I yeah. shave bunnies and rub allergens on them, and this is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. so it's bad news. Um, go Elon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm sure he'll be uh, he'll be brought to justice someday. Some sort of capable lawyer may uh, bring him to heel, uh, and so that would be good. That'd be a dream sequence, you know, almost like super good daredevil run <laughs> yeah <laughs> the um okay so uh <laughs> hi everyone distinction agenda um james james and chris so we uh we're as uh, unbeknownst to you dear listener we're preparing um our souls and our bodies and our minds to uh to delve into the to the current realm of hackery and in uh the month of october we're intending to have a uh, another tournament of all like the the current contemporary hacks you know like who's the names out there who's the people um excluding some some names that have been around for a while uh you know i think karen gillen got a, got escaped um even though he he ought to be in the tournament and we thought about putting one name on the list uh one man by the name of chip Zardsky, um who is the pseudonym for uh, one steve murray um and but uh, but yeah, we were like, nah, I like doesn't belong there. He's writing Batman. He's writing Daredevil. He's he's the, supposedly the creme de la creme. Well, the yeah. And then you read that read that uh, that review of Daredevil or maybe I found that in in IGN. I can't remember where we read it, but it, it, the, the guy just like really jerked off Zardsky. And I yeah. thought, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of praise, like too much praise. Not appropriate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How can this be? You know? And they were talking about how like uh, his his final run was like a masterpiece where um, Bullseye was a metaphor for COVID-19. And I got on board with that because, you know, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, and he picked the pen name Chip Zardsky. And I was angry about that. But I was wrong. Uh, yeah. And so we decided that we would we would tackle his Daredevil run. Not all of it, although I have um, more or less read all of it, uh, I think. But we don't have time for all that because he wrote it from 2019 up until August of this year. Uh, he did like, I don't know, a lot of issues. Actually, I should have written down the number, but 50, uh, something like that, you know, like in total, maybe more, probably more. Uh, and um, so we, I just did one of those things where I uh, selected representative issues from the beginning of the series. Uh, so we did uh, one through six, uh, 11 through 13, 19 and 20 and 23 of daredevil volume nine um for the most part i also selected uh issues that were um illustrated by marco Cicchetto, uh and uh because i think he brings the sauce like the serious sauce to this book um but there was one in there that was illustrated by someone else and it was pretty i don't know i guess we'll get to that but i thought i thought it's still pretty solid i think chips not resting completely on uh old Cicchetto. It's true. Yeah. The um, you know what else, too, though? I'm going to say this. Mm-hmm. When you pick something up and it's covered in shit and you just wash it off in the sink, um, it's kind of a low bar that you're going to get it clean. You know, mm. like I, I don't I don't think there's been a lot of hot daredevil, you know, it's been coming a across the plate like not like very recently. No, no, not recently. Although, you know, who who am I to like Charles Soule had a run. Uh that that might have been okay. Um fuck, who was before that? And I said the last great run that I'm aware of is Bendis and then followed by Ed Brubaker. Uh, I was gonna but, say I remember Brubaker's. Yeah. And that like that was okay. 
but it didn't it didn't really knock my socks off and then i uh, i fell off because like someone took over who i didn't give a shit about but the last time daredevil uh was announced to be a hot ticket item uh you know is sardsky you know he's he's one of the he's a big name all of a sudden um he's also writing batman at the present moment and uh so yeah he's he's made it he's made it the the frank miller territory uh at least in terms of like projects um and we liked this that's fair to say yeah Yeah. i gotta say um yeah especially like i don't know if you guys how'd you guys like the uh, like the opening actually is what sort of hooked me the uh the pickup at the bar i like that too yeah absolutely it was so good (laughs) it was so charming and uh yeah and really like set the tone for for the state that uh that matt was in at the time well yeah because he's fucking uh, he's pouring like he's like what what is he he's ordering scotch and he's taking pain meds uh, you know, right there in the opening and like, and, and she, he's picking up some sort of like tramp lady at the, well, she's, she's pretty, but, um, you know, he's just out at the club. She's like some, uh, criminal's girlfriend. Uh, and he's just out at the bar, uh, crashing the party and taking pain meds. And I like the, um, and then the contrast, you know, like, can I have one? Sorry. That would be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you're just like, wow, you know, like I did you guys end up reading the Batman first issue? Yeah. And I thought that there's a similar tack that um, uh, Zardsky has taken in these two things where he opens it up like one of the one of the things I complain about with comics or movies or whatever is there's not enough sex or intimations of sex. And this thing opens up with, you know, sex. sex. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the the Batman comic, although there's not sex, there's like he makes sure that he opens up with some sort of like relationship with the sexy lady between Batman and Catwoman, you know, like she's needlessly in her panties. Uh, and, and then all that stuff kind of falls away, but he opens it up with, with that little, uh, yeah. hook, which is, I don't know. Good, good move. But it, it doesn't hear like, like there's a couple, uh, you know, there's a couple of, uh, ongoing hookups with, uh, True. throughout this run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not about, you know, bookstore yeah. owner like slash criminal mobster's wife or something i didn't really because yeah. we were jumping around yeah, yeah i didn't really follow that part but i think you nailed it uh just like you nailed her huh <laughs> uh, the i met murdoch isn't afraid to fuck that's i think that's been established in hey, he's yeah. a man with no fear <laughs> <laughs> that's right no right. fear of babes he, yeah. yeah and I, like, like you say too I, and you know now i'm thinking about that and processing like there's not a lot of people that throw sex into a book. No, but the, the, unsurprisingly, the man who wrote Sex Criminals uh, is interested in sex. <laughs> and, mm, there you go. Yeah, yeah the um, and I don't know. I think it it adds like, or you know, sex. I don't need anything really exciting to happen, but it lets me know that I'm reading an adult book. Um, you know, I'm not. Yeah. it's not. It's not the funnies. I yeah. think that's right. Yeah, there's there's a tone of like I was thinking about what makes a good Daredevil comic, and I was kind of like you, James. You actually said I, think, I can't remember if it was in on air or like afterwards in a chat, but you said Daredevil is a prestige comic that uh, that a lot of people kind of want to write, and I was yeah. doubting that, but I see I see all the elements here. You know, there's there's that element of Matt's inner torment always, the the kind of Catholic guilt. There's um, just the brutality of what he does like the the he's always in pain like the, the like the pain medication thing is like seems to be a constant refrain in this now like uh just yeah it's it's uh it, there's desperation to to his life and and just a grittiness to it that that really comes through and i think like you're saying like just having an element of sexuality really kind of brings all that home too mm-hmm yeah, in in Frank Miller's run, like Daredevil ends up getting like his kingpin ruins his life, and he ends up like depressed, like he can't even get out of bed. Uh, he is you know driven to the brink so often. Like like one thing about Daredevil is like the writers can really torture him, uh, and he's he's Christ like like that perhaps. Uh, that's that's putting it too far, but I think given the uh, or 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 I don't know like Jesuit of him, you know he's self flagellating 
yeah. in, a, in a way. Um, and that, you know, that doesn't necessarily make it good, but it is, it's a different type of character, you know, that w- then, I don't know, Captain America or Hawkeye or anything like that. Now, none of these guys are really like sorry for themselves, but Matt's fucking reckless in this, like so fucking reckless. Yeah, it's true. He's almost suicidal at points. And, it, and it's funny, too, that I never I don't know. I never found like a real draw in the character. But this time I did. I don't know why I like I like the direction. Um, like I, I like all the stuff you were just saying, Chris. It's 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 true. It's to, to he he's like he's just having a horrible go at things. And he's just he's just he's doing he's just doing self damage. Um um, and and they and they do play into into his uh, his Catholicism and and his and his upbringing, but it's not the 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 touch on's not like not like atypical origin either. Like like I'm not getting spoon fed another fucking origin. Like I hate that, and he doesn't Chip doesn't do that, which is also refreshing. And at the same time, he does go into the past and, you know, like, like there when young Matt is speaking with the priest um, and those those conversations between Matt and the priest are uh, they are very clear signposts to the themes of this book. Uh, you know, this idea that uh, like violence is an addiction, Um you know, use your powers for good, give on to Caesar, what is Caesar's, you know, that all that, all that stuff. Um, and th- that's a, I don't know. I honestly don't know if that's an angle that anyone else has, has taken up. Um, I, I have recollections of Matt talking with a nun, uh, in flashbacks or dealing with his dad, who was a boxer. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this priest is a is a Chip Zardsky invention or like an elaboration upon something, but I think it's a good choice um, and and opens up more because Matt Murdock's dad is like he ends up dying in the ring again like in, in a boxing ring uh, and Matt ends up orphaned, I believe. Um, and this kind of just skirts around all that. Like it it, does, it acknowledges that those things happened, but but only. It's just on the, I think I already said on the periphery. Um, yeah. And that's that, that lets him do an origin basically lets him like go back to the past and, and give you all the groundwork for a new story. But like, he doesn't have to do the, he's not doing the classic work around. He's sort of, I don't know. There's a word for that, right? Like where you, where he's like filling in sort of like blanks that are there. He, he, but but he's still going back to the past and using an origin. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know what the word would be either. I mean, like it's not ret, retconning anything, uh, but it is. It's just yeah, it's just filling in spaces. It's finding spaces where uh, a new story can be told, um, but with, while respecting the past. You know, without I don't think anything's changed here. Uh, what do you guys think of Cole North? Great. Yeah, interesting character. Like I think they very clearly want Idris Elba to play him in whatever adaptation <laughs> they're gonna do. Um, yeah. For those but, who uh, know, he's, he's the cop. He's like the the police officer who uh, is, is gonna bring down Daredevil. Yeah, comes over from Chicago, super cop, um, like just obsessed with pursuing the letter of the law, and it gives Daredevil that foil of like you know that. I think both Daredevil and and Spider Man in this like if you wanna. Let's throw a D and D alignment on them. Neutral good, like they don't care what the law says if it's gonna, if there's, if they're able to to do good in the world. Um, and he's just like relentless in pursuing the letter of the law until, um, you know, and it's a, like a match for Daredevil even in a way, like just like a huge presence. Like so many characters in this, like the way that it's drawn. Um, like I'm thinking of Rhino. I'm thinking of like even Stiltman's kind of terrifying in this. Uh, yeah. like you just get the sense of like just the immensity of them like what, what it might look like if you're a citizen like facing down something like this and it's like wow these guys are big the kingpin's ridiculous yeah yeah he's all well and that's uh that's a frank miller thing as well i think one of the uh the, the best one of the reason i think this this book in my opinion falls off after issue 23 and gets a little little up its own ass and and boring 
is uh, is because like by the time you get to issue twenty three or twenty two, Matt's back. You know, like he's Daredevil now. He's not on the edge yeah. anymore. He's got his special magic powers. He's he's beaten up every all the comers, and that's actually that's like less interesting. Like watching watching this this story of Matt's sort of um, redemption crisis of is. Peace. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um and uh and and like once he he once it resolves that to the extent that it does resolve it that idea like it, it, it like this story is like about vigilantism. Uh it's about other things, but I mean it's about the law and the and doing the good and if you can't do the good within the realm of the law but you have the power to do the good, you know, like ought you do it. Um yeah, and it takes it takes morality very seriously too. Like it's it's a very good faith engagement with like using various characters, but to think through those ideas as well. Yeah, and that like and then and then finally Matt's back and like he answers the question for himself and but it's an unambiguous answer. You know, in the Marvel universe, billionaires might hire goons to destroy city blocks, <laughs> <laughs> and so you yeah. might need you might need Daredevil. You know, like it's an easy it's an easy answer to the questions that have been posed. Um, but once again, you know, like and again, if if you read the first issue of uh, Batman, like there's another thing that makes this compelling is because it's a like the main villains are billionaires. You know, like they, there's there is a class conflict um, in, in this, you know, like you just none of it's too none of it's ham fisted, but it's all there to make compelling drama. Uh, it, it's a it's a good stew that it, you know like once it's finally served and you eat it up and you're like mm, that was great you know you I don't know for all of that though I I just don't I don't think this is a this is great you know with a capital G uh, I think this is just very good uh, very very highly competent and and exciting superhero storytelling starring our man Matt Murdock I think that's fair yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair too. I I don't um <clears throat> you know, it, it, sometimes you have that urge where you're like, I'd like to have that in my library, you know. Mm-hmm. Or I have that urge anyway. And yep. I, I don't I I really enjoyed this. Super enjoyed it actually, but I don't have I don't have that inkling that I should have it like like whatever, you know, like monsters or I don't know. I can't think of yeah, anything. whatever. <laughs> of my head. Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Guard- yeah, Brian Michael Bendis, Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, yeah. listen, I buy some shit also. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's like I, I've essentially read through these issues that we're talking about. I've read through them twice now, and and some other stuff, you know, just re-reviewing. Uh, it it reads fairly well the the second time. Like it's not. It's, it manages to not bore the second time, but at the same time, like, it, you know, it doesn't thrill me. Um, I there there was no like there was only one. Fuck, yeah, moment, and it had really very little to do with the story for me. The only fuck, yeah, moment was when Matt is fighting that uh, guy in the suit of armor. So he's he's showed up and he's trying to take down the owl because because um, he, he's realized that he's accidentally killed someone. And so Matt's freaking out and he's like, I, you know, I, I just need to do something before they take me in. And I, he takes on the owl and that guy in the armor attacks him. And uh, he puts the chain on him before the before the van starts driving off. And he just like gives him that smile or whatever. Um, fuck, where was that? Anyway, I was just awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. What you it's mean and that's that's how he like that's yeah. how he kind of like takes off into the fucking up up a like a whatever a 30 story building to be able to fight the guy yeah yeah uh i just thought that action and like the the action in this is very good as well i that goes a long way it is well paced and it's not just because of the writer or the uh artist although although chichetto fucking knocks it out of the park you know consistently i'm i'm really taken with with him and i i want to see some other work that he's done but the it it is a in from in some instances it was a Warren Ellis level of control of fight pacing uh, and angles and that kind of thing. I I thought that um and and it it, it I'm almost certain is explicitly you know aping Warren Ellis like chip chip comes from you know like the Warren Ellis message boards and all that shit. 
uh, he's he's got a long sort of association, and I'm I'm sure he picked up some tricks. I'm sure he picked up tricks elsewhere, but um, yeah, it's good. And you and you guys know what my favorite part was. I don't know what is it. Daredevil or the Punisher? Oh yeah, appearance. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Where he fucking comes in and shoots up all the cops and chokes out the coal north or whatever. Yeah. That was awesome. Let, yeah, let's then he that. shows up to get disrespected by Chip. How do we? Yeah, okay, so how did you yeah. feel about that depiction of the Punisher? I was going to ask you the same thing. Uh, it was fun. It was fun and funny, and it was to prop up Matt. Um, it was a really shitty fucking... It was a real low road to take on Frank, I personally think. It was an so. un, unredeemably yeah. low road to take on Frank to the point where, like, you I don't see a way you could use him in your own universe again. Uh, like, there's no logic, logical we, way that we, you can you can continue to keep it because Daredevil has a sphere of like characters that get used yeah. in and out of his stories. Punisher is in that sphere when you use Punisher like a fucking moron, like a like a bloodthirsty fucking maniac then with like absolutely no but he shows control but uh, i mean it's basically a goof off like it is cameo i almost took it as like um like this is daredevil's perception of frank and like maybe it's even exaggerated because i also i felt the same i didn't really believe that because frank he's almost like he is basically a psychopath like you can accuse frank of being a psychopath but he was pretty psychopathic in this. Um, and I don't know, like the thing that for me, I like, and I actually wanted to ask you about this, James, uh, being our, our resident expert. Um, mm-hmm. But I didn't feel like, so like as Frank takes Matt into the sewers, he's rescued him. Uh, he's, he's really excited that, that Daredevil's killed a man. And he's like, you've seen the light. And uh, then <laughs> he, um, he's got a, like a thug, like, uh, like sort of like a low level nuke tied to a chair. He's a, he's getting information, beating the shit out of him, but then he's about to just kill him in cold blood. And I felt, I don't feel like Punisher would do that. I feel like he would give a guy a chance. Like, I don't know. I'm going to go with a no on that. Uh, yeah. As uh, I'm, I'm far from the only expert in the Punisher around here, but uh, yeah, Frank's a murderer. He's like, he's a disgusting murderer. What the only thing that, that, uh, well, so just to pause for one second, I just remembered Chichetto, he does the Punisher run with Greg Rucka, which is fantastic. Uh, and if you want to want if you if you're interested in seeing that this guy draw the Punisher in really awesome stories, uh, go to that Greg Rucka run. All right. But what struck me as very un Frank Castle in this story is like, why is he kidnapping Daredevil? Like Frank Castle's never going to do that. And what's he hoping to do? Are they going to team up? Is he is he hoping that Matt is is going to now that he's murdered someone like join Frank on his quest to like be a super murderer? Like, I don't understand what the end point was here. <laughs> yeah, that that and that's like sort of the that's the sort of the piece that like makes Frank diminished. Like, is Frank yeah. just a bombling moron? Like, that doesn't because why there's no end to this. There's no like logical end to this this choice. Yeah. It was like um, a religious, like, like fanaticism or ze- zeal, like to like, oh, like you're finally converted. And, like you just like got overexcited or some shit. I think I do think that's it. And, and like what another reason this is Frank is diminished is because he's he's a prop. This is a, a prop version of the Punisher, because like this book is about vigilantism. And so Frank Castle is the ultimate vigilante. Like what what if what if not like what if. You you didn't just go out and like beat the shit out of people. What if you fucking killed them? You know, like it's <laughs> uh, it's 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 a it, it is there is a line there. Um, and Frank Castle like goes over it gleefully. That's that's his purpose. Um, but you know, and but and also like the wild mood swings. He's just like you know, all of a sudden, so he brings Daredevil over, and then realizes that Daredevil is not going to. Uh, to give up. And so like, basically he just decides like, all right, it's time for me to kill you daredevil as if they hadn't fought a million times before. Uh, you know, it's sort of just been established that daredevil is not going to take out Frank and Frank's not going to kill daredevil. Uh, cause that otherwise you're right, James, like they can't exist in the same universe. 
And then there's there's a, there's a whole other problem too. Is like in addition to Daredevil being like Matt Murdock here at this point in time is he's diminished. He, mm-hmm. he doesn't have his powers really back. He's been shot in the shoulder and beat up by a boxing cop. And now what? Now now he's capable of being like the god of war against Frank Castle. He should have got the dog shit beat out of him and left in a fucking corner to wake up later. Yeah, something like that. That doesn't make it. It doesn't. There's no. There's no. There's no tracking that he randomly got all of his senses and powers back for one mystical moment against Frank Castle. It doesn't. That doesn't track. It doesn't do the story any justice. It doesn't. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's it's meant to prop. It's it, it it props up Daredevil. You know. Yeah, like, but there were other times to prop him up against the. I cop. agree. Against yeah. di- more diminished characters, against characters that don't have to cycle back into your Marvel universe, there is mm-hmm. all kinds of op- opportunity for that. And they, he just like he let like a bunch of fucking corner store robbers kick the dog shit out of him yeah. by a fucking Honda. Okay, where like <laughs> there, what was that? Like, are the corner store robbers gonna come back around in another Marvel book later? Like, what the? F- it's not fucking useful. Like, it doesn't. I don't know. It was a dumb moment, bad moment, funny. Yeah. You know, but it's hard to steal. Yeah, Uh, kick you. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I like that. I don't know. I just like those little fucking phony, fucking idiot. (laughs) Kicks him across the room. I liked. Um, I there was the kind of a fuck yeah moment in this for me. That like I'd never thought about that before. But like when when Daredevil grabs the guns and just like like surgically takes them apart, uh, Frank apart, like just shoot like glazing him like just with grazing him with like flesh wounds like do you have any idea what i could do with guns uh i never thought about that before but that is kind of terrifying you know that the idea of like if if he sapped if he could use the senses for that yeah although maybe gunshots constant with super senses are um maybe not the Ooh, best that's so. true he did say that yeah he did say that like a little loud for his uh yeah the, the I guess, I guess we haven't before we move on to anything else the um oh shit maybe I lost my my train of thought on that one yeah you go? oh no this is this goes in the column of like okay so amongst a certain amongst uh Punisher fandom uh there is the idea that Marvel current Marvel aka Disney Marvel which is a whole other can of fucking beans Disney has nothing to do with it but uh, the Punisher is not loved over at Marvel right now. Like I haven't read Jason Aaron's Punisher run for some reason. He's associated with the hand. All of a sudden he's the leader of the hand. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure it's fine. Jason Aaron's a good writer uh, when he wants to be. Um, but yeah, this, this just like this depiction of the Punisher is, is the depiction that really meets like, this is not, this is not a writer or, or I'll just say this isn't a writer who likes the Punisher in any sense uh and and is quite happy to sort of be rid be rid of them uh and would never sort of take them up again uh, and i don't know if that's how marvel views the punisher nowadays i i suspect not but uh this this would feed fuel that particular fire i think yeah and i i i'm still like i'm i mean i'm a big punisher fan but the um uh like i just don't I again like I just like how 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 is the guy not able to get past and, and and then the worst part is after he dismantles Frank like this he goes on to continue to be diminished until he runs into Electra um True. so like I I just don't I don't I don't see where this boost came from it doesn't it doesn't track for for his narrative either and I know it's supposed to you know, you've got to give Matt something here to work with, but I just, I just think there was better opportunities. And also, like, I, I'm, I'm with you there on that Frank thing. It's like a, it's definitely like, I don't, I don't know what they're doing with him now, or, or I don't know, like, I get, you know, I, I know this leads down the, uh, the forum conversation that there's no room in woke Marvel for Frank. Yeah, uh, yeah. You yep. know, that, that's where that's headed, right? And that's the. But that might actually be the case. <laughs> like, I don't like I, it does make me wonder, you know, like I, 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 I kind of want to read Jason Aaron's run. Like, I don't imagine it's going to be in any sense woke, but I like you're not going to get 
you're not going to get your Chuck Dixon, Garth Ennis take, your Mike Barron take on The Punisher, where he's just a murderous fuck who hates and wants to, like, eliminate. Like, I, I, I can't see that being something that Marvel nowadays embraces. Uh, well, and that was always the problem with 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 Frank. And actually, that's a problem with with Daredevil being a, a fucking drug addict fruit basket that beats the shit out of people in the streets. You know what I mean? Like they're these are problematic characters and problematic themes uh, that get pushed into Marvel Max, Marvel Knights. There's a there's an alleyway for this stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And there are people that read it and there are, believe it or not, in the woke world, there's still grownups um, that don't mind reading violent narratives or narratives that are military based or or have interest in in themes like that. You know, that's still, you know, I don't know who's catering to what now or or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I mean, like you, you can you can still branch off. Uh, a, a subsection of books and say, okay, this is not in our main vein, you know, and that's how it was handled in the past. And I'm a little confused as to why it can't still be, but I mean, that's I, whatever. I'm sure that's their, whoever's editing there. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That's a, that brings us far afield, but uh, actually it kind of does make me think though, that this, this book would have benefited from even a little bit more of a, I don't know. I can say adult touch, but a little more free of a hand. I, uh, I it, it's hard to imagine where it would like. I mean, there's some really brutal violence in this. Uh, I could concur. Yeah, <laughs> the kingpin. I was just thinking about that. The bathtub <laughs> yeah. scene. Yeah, Jesus. Fuck. But even that's muted. Like yeah. you say that that's like that's like it's, it's like a it, it's a it's a it's it is it's a full off panel and then it's like a flash buddies in the shower curtain. So yeah, it's like he, he, even that's oh. taken from us, you know. Yeah, I think sometimes with horror, like what you don't see is can be as effective, and like that is a that's a horror moment for sure. He just wraps the guy with a shower curtain and like pummels him to death. Like, yeah, so I guess we should, you know, uh, the depiction of the kingpin in this is uh, also unusual. Like seeing the, this this fish out of water kingpin, I don't. Yeah. It's fun, but like on the other hand, I don't like it. I don't think it works very well for the character, but it's good for drama. Uh, one thing that Zardsky in, uh, you know, like, so you have to torture your characters in order to make interesting drama occur. And one of the most interesting characters in Daredevil stories is the Kingpin uh, and an opportunity to talk about Kingpin in politics and uh, use him as a, a gateway to he's seeking legitimacy. So he's like, he's the mayor of, of New York and also like a, a crime boss of epic proportions, but he sits down with the billionaires and, and suddenly he just feels small and picked on. And I d- like, on the one hand, I, I liked it because there was drama, but on the other hand, I was like, this is the kingpin. <laughs> they, they should be shitting their pants. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like this is, uh, he's, he is, a premier Marvel villain and, and like just because like he sold heroin or whatever, like they're talking about, Oh, our international investments, you wouldn't understand that, you know, uh, Fisk. And like, I, he probably at some point, I, I believe that Fisk is like a billionaire. Like I, that's how I have always viewed him, uh, as like, he's not a millionaire. Um, he's one of the most powerful people in New York city. One of the greatest, most, large largest moneyed place on earth right and he controls the city uh he's he and and he has reach uh, like international reach I, I don't know i know it was a stupid nerd thing but i was like this doesn't track uh like but it tracks in terms of like like getting a, a psychological profile of the character and getting some interesting drama out of them but i just felt like i didn't care for it yeah um, i i agree with that in fact i to me like the his whole story arc like the kind of breakdown and needing uh wesley his like his like manservant or whatever his like right hand i guess uh Mm -hmm. to come in it reminded me like very much of like a mr burn smithers thing and it just i could not take it seriously yeah yeah like just that's not the comparison you want no yeah it was like there was an episode where like mr burns like had like yeah he just like relied heavily had this crisis of confidence like smithers had to like kind of come in and like talk him down from the ledge and i was like this is this reminds me of this 
too much. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't know how I took it. I, I, I know that the, he was squeezing, like you guys say, I, I was squeezing the drama out of the moment, but there's no way logically, no matter how rich you are, that you'd speak to a man like that with that reputation without seeking, like without having some kind of care in, in your tone. That's just stupid. That's not possible. Or it's not even like fake possible. Like it just doesn't make sense. It's just dumb. Like, a, yeah. um, it, but it, it did, it did draw out that, like that sort of like magic moment. Um, but I, he, I find he like has, a, I find his characterization on Matt Murdoch's a phenomenal. Um, and then I found a lot of his characterization on other people. Like what did Spider-Man rolls into Matt Murdoch's fucking bedroom and like tells him he's done. Like, mm-hmm. fuck you, kid. Get the fuck out of my house or I'll, <laughs> once I get fucking rested up, I'll beat the dog shit out of you. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, there's no that, that's not that's odd. That's off for Spider-Man. Doesn't track, doesn't use the character well either. You know, so I, I, I found he did a lot of that, like that. He that he, he, he I don't know what he took, like a Matt Murdock boner as far as it could go. But he like kind of like snuffed out a lot of other characters like without without really like giving any forethought to to how he just like basically just wrung out his dramatic moments without without really running the characters properly which is odd for marvel because that's not usually a thing and odd that it still works um i i do i disagree with you on the spider-man thing but this is like the and i and this is a nerd podcast it's so we can we can disagree about it's true, <laughs> true yeah i'm i'm willing to hear why you feel like spider-man would try to bully matt murdoch hey <laughs> oh go, go on chris no i i kind of liked it too and i felt a bit off balance because i don't really know where spider-man is like these days um but it struck me as like Peter Parker's kind of grown into something of a leadership role amongst the sort of like street level of vigilantes uh, to some extent. So I think I, I took it as like his word had some gravitas behind it. Um, and yeah, like he kind of came in to sit him down and be like, it's sort of like a coach, like being like, yeah, like, you know, you're going to have to sit out for a while. Uh, like you, you, your head's not in the game and like, you know, it, the stakes are too big. The stakes are too big for you to, to be fucking around like this. Like you're reckless. Yeah. Um, well, cause like Matt, Matt's like, he's just drinking booze and taking his pills. Like he never, he never just oh, takes God. his pills. Yeah. He'd, uh, be, he'd, he'd have serious like uh, <laughs> issues. He'd have overdosed yeah. like several times in real life. So uh, Zartsky has a, um, just, just the, I'm going to come to the defense of Zartsky on the Spider-Man front. He, uh, he wrote Spider-Man for like two years prior to this. Uh, none of it was Spider-Man brooding or, or tough or whatever. This struck, this did strike me as like your my, Brian Michael Bendis Spider-Man. Like, um, the, the, but I think it flows from the idea that Spider-Man is the moral authority. So whereas the Punisher is the bad vigilante, um, Spider-Man is the good vigilante. The one who uh, always sacrifices, always suffers and always perseveres and always does the right thing. Um, And I I I hear what you're saying, James, about how, like, maybe it's a little too dark, maybe it's a little too tough. But I I thought Spider-Man got done well, done right in the sense that, like, he there's still that he still is a fun character. And he is he gets like a super like he gets like a Superman treatment, like he's the best of them. Uh, and I don't, I don't think that that's a bad for a, for a Marvel comic. I think that's a good tack to take. And, uh, and I think for within this universe of, of these, um, various holes, uh, or, or like, so you got your cop who's all justice. You got your Spider-Man who's like the best of all worlds. You got your Punisher who's a vigilante you got your Electra who is, uh, your mercenary, you know, um, there's all these different like extremes around Matt and he kind of bounces around them in order to like find himself. Uh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think that Spider-Man got it bad, but I do, I do take your point. Like, but I think later on he's, he is more fun. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. He did like, he did kind of lighten it up a bit. Uh, Like after that moment, I just, I just didn't. um, Yeah. But like you say too, Chris, uh, and, and, I, like you both said, the 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 character too, like the Spider-Man character, like 
isn't really static anymore. Like like there there's there's old guy teacher Spider Man. There's yeah. Spider Man that that beat the shit out of the Kingpin in jail. There's you know there's all different Spider Mans and they're they're older, younger, vary in age. So like the severity or the the I, I see I take what you mean though. Like the treatment that he's like like sort of powerful and 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 the 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 sort of far extreme to the other side of the punisher Mm -hmm. one thing that i really loved in characterization i think that'll like stick with me i um so it's seeing him through cole's eyes where he like talks about how like the first time you see someone be 10 feet or 15 feet in the air and like still it's like you never forget that and then just with the conversation they have on the rooftop cole's like you think you're above the law and and he's like yeah i kind of do actually yeah Uh, like yeah i kind of fill in the gas where law fucks up so yeah it was, it was nice to hear somebody acknowledge that. Just like, yeah, who cares? It's, uh, you know. And then, yeah, and his response when Daredevil hugs him. <laughs> He's like, yeah. That's kind of funny. Um, yeah, the... Uh, anyway, I liked it. I, it made me want to read Sartsky's Spider-Man run. Uh, I bet it's I bet it's pretty good. I bet... I think I think one of the things that happened accidentally in this is I was like I might have become a small fan of Chip Zarsky, um, because yeah he's got he's got some chops. I love how they depict. I don't I know that um it has become common now. Oh, Mark Wade did a a Daredevil run that people think really highly of, but I never. It's got good art. I I was never drawn to it anyway, so that just popped to mind. But the um. I love how his radar sense is depicted in this. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I, I thought about that actually this morning. Mm-hmm. That uh, that it's that it's uh, it, it's it's clever and it's not overdone either. Yeah. It's uh, he he touches it when he needs it, like when he needs like Matt Murdock to describe something to the to the reader, you know, through through thought. He'll maybe like touch on it or use it like a little bit to kind of just give you that extra that extra like thought. In, in your mind that, that, that he's, you know, just to remind you. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's not overdone either, which I liked. Yeah. An issue. What, uh, what, which one is this issue three after he gets knocked out by the, um, by Cole, uh, and the Punisher comes in and like chokes out, chokes out Cole and everything. And, uh, you're, you're seeing from his perspective, the, the radar image and it's kind of blurry and then it's dissipating and then it's black and then it's starting to reemerge. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it just, you're, you're, you're right, James. Like he just touches on it when, when it has, it serves sort of a dramatic effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's almost a bit poetic in a way, like the way it's used. Um, I just one we didn't really cover the issue, but as I was flipping through, I noticed there's one scene where like early on, he's kind of having that crisis of face and, um, an issue ends where he's like on the phone calling the police, like just calling in all these crimes. Uh, you know, oh, like a, right. there's yeah, robbery yeah. and like, you please get here quickly. But then it like splash page, like the entire city. And like, there's just like text everywhere of like these crimes happening and like his radar sense going off. And he's just like aware of all of it, but not able to do anything about it. Cause he's just doesn't trust himself. That was really well done. Yeah. Uh, and, and what he would do with that afterwards. And I like the idea of, um, uh, a daredevil that, um so yeah i guess he was mayor of the city for a while that's probably a shitty storyline um <laughs> you know he was a lawyer previously but then now he's like all of a sudden i don't know how you become a parole officer out of nowhere but whatever uh he becomes a parole officer and i like that uh you know this this idea that the vigilante is tied so intimately to the legal system to the justice system uh such as it is and uh, it is it is an interesting contrast, and it is another thing that makes Daredevil so unique in the in the landscape of Marvel superheroes and like kind of like all the superheroes. Uh, yeah. He's yeah he's just very very implicated. Like usually vigilantism is completely outside the system, but he's you know he's got that dichotomy, uh, which you know sorry not obviously it's it's kind of an obvious statement, but it is an important thing to to state which is yeah that that dichotomy yeah on the subject of the law um mm-hmm. i'm sorry uh, uh mayors this kingpin thing like do you could do you are you able to confirm that this um meant to be a way for marvel to kind of comment on trump without 
directly doing it? Oh man, I I can't say. My sense was that Matt Murdock was mayor, and so what do you do after that? You flip it around. Kingpin is mayor. Uh, I think it's, I think it, it predates COVID. So it doesn't not COVID. Sorry. Um, I guess racist grandpa was 2016. I don't know, man. Uh, maybe, maybe, okay. it, maybe it's a happy coincidence. Maybe, uh, maybe not. But I, I just took it as like your pendulum swinging kind of thing. You know, like what's what's worse than Matt Murdock no longer being mayor, his ultimate enemy becoming mayor. So it could have been. Yeah, it could be coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. Momentum. OK. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, though, but you're I guess I don't, is there anything specifically Trumpian about him? Uh I, I, yeah, that, I think that's the thing that also makes me think that there isn't a, if there is a connection to be made, I don't think Chip Zardsky's making it. Uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm wrong about that. But uh, You're probably anything. not wrong about that because he does come to this, the defense of his city, you know, Hell's Kitchen in the end. Yeah, which racist grandpa would never do. No, he definitely wouldn't. No, no. Before that, he's more like just like a Doug Ford type. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm trying to get a snow. I'm trying to get a sense of when when he became mayor, like what year that would have been. But anyway, I would deal with that later. Um, yeah. What? Uh... The um, yeah, that, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say the one one critique I have of this comic, the Electra uh, like pre training of that was really <laughs> unsatisfying. Just like. Basically, remember we had a mentor named Stick, and he taught us to do stuff. You should uh, you should get back to that. Be in control, and like it's like a couple of fights, and then he's like back uh, to tooling her. Yeah, is it all within issues like eleven through thirteen? Yeah, uh, happens real fast. Yeah, I think he's still a little diminished after that because he doesn't get back get back until um until the the crescendo thing like issues 19 and 20 True. Uh, some some stuff happened between 14 and 19 i don't remember what it was though I, he says he's going to take on like a governor or something like that like he he like she tells him that um you know like typical catholic uh you know you've, you've never had goals just general ideas like you're, you're kind of responding out of guilt and like you don't have direction and then uh he uh he's like yeah like i'm going to take on I'm going to go after a governor, but I didn't read past that. To see yeah. That yeah. I like that idea though, is a, um, that is a good criticism. That's like, yeah, like again, Sardsky, he's, there's something smart in that. In, yeah. In, Cause it's, it's fair, you know, like I'm going to go out and fight crime. And then of course you're going to like fall apart. Like it's too big. Yeah. Um, well, both but, Frank and uh, and Electra accuse him of that of being selfish. Like Frank's like, you know, I think you're a good guy, but like you you just kind of like do the thing that that makes you feel better as opposed to dealing with problems. Um, so maybe maybe there's some shadow of that over him. And I mean, it is so yeah. Again, like yeah, if you're just fighting, like they have that conversation with the Punisher. Like he's like, why shouldn't I kill this guy? And he's like, well, like you know, a lifetime of of uh, media like telling him that these are his only choices. Like bad parents, like whatever, like bad background. And Frank's like. You know, if he dies, I'm a math guy. If he dies, then like a hundred innocent people might live. So that's simple for me. Yeah, is this guy a mass murderer though? Like, why why a hundred? You know, no, like I, I, yeah, well, that's, yeah, yeah. I think, anyway, yeah. But it's, it's yeah. Frank's projecting, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he's I think he's like he's he's taking it a little farther. He's like a huge exaggeration of Frank or whatever. But I mean, like logically, like that would have stood ground too to say like he's likely gonna kill a handful more people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's so that's, if I kill right. him, that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's you. You often see this on the uh, on the on the Punisher Facebook page, Facebook group or whatever. They'll they'll there's a it's a quote, basically, like every every time I, you know, you you shit. How does it go? I don't know. It's often like they contrast like something that's <clears throat> Batman says with, you know, Batman says, like, if you if you end up if you murdered someone, then you're not reducing the number of murderers in the world because you've increased the number by one. You know, so like the number of murderers stays constant. And then, of course, the Punisher's response is like, I kill a 100 of them. And, you know, like um, and yeah, it's just it's the 
it's the exaggerated um we've already talked about you know it's the exaggerated punisher uh what about the so when when hell's kitchen is getting all busted up and everybody's fighting back or whatever but like what what do we make of the fact that people are putting on all those daredevil masks and like hated that yeah right like that that's dumb like i really kind of passed over that in my notes but i'm looking at it right now and i'm like yeah, was it like a Dark Knight thing he was doing? Like, re- I, I'm not wearing hockey pants. I think so. Uh, Is it like a nod that way? That's all I could think of. I thought people like where where that. Daredevil was so oh. so important to the neighborhood that you know. Yeah. Well, he represents that fighting spirit, you know, like we're going to fight. But like he represents like he's a vigilante. They're not engaging in vigilantism like a bunch of people are blowing up their fucking neighborhood and they're grabbing bats and they're fighting back. Like they're just engaging in self-defense and like for whatever they were doing it anyway, like they had already started this, like this movement. Yeah. Yeah. Like people are going to, cause hell's kitchen needs the devil. Right. You know, it's hell. Um, I don't, yeah, I didn't, it, it is part of the, um, they refer to this age. Okay, not they, but like um the mindless ones, uh, a blog, and they from I don't know probably they coined this phrase back in like 2006 or whatever. But they coined this age of Marvel comic of superhero comics the prismatic age. And what they meant by that is like, you know, you don't just have Captain America. You have uh, the Falcon is Captain America, and you have this version of Captain America, and you don't have this Thor. You've got a bunch of different Thors. And, uh, you know, or, or you don't have one Daredevil, you're going to have a bunch of different types. And there's a the prolifinate, pl- proliferation of franchise, uh, of, of character or whatever. And this, you know, it just kind of struck me as like unconsciously emulating that prismatic, um, tendency in, in contemporary comics. You know, it's like, why have one Miss Marvel when you can have two Miss Marvels or three of them? Um, and it but in in almost like a an accidental parody <laughs> of of that tendency um uh, like it, it kind of fits the story but it it also like i don't know it was really dumb yeah i think what because like it is in in the text that i think what chip wants to say is that dare like this idea like daredevil is an idea it, it is the conscience of um hell's kitchen and or just having something like that is necessary to hover over people like Catholic guilt almost. Uh, yeah. But I don't, it was annoying. It was just like, yeah, it felt very hokey. Like this sort of like, you know, Oh, if daredevils fall and then like just random citizens can jump in and they get tooled every fucking time. And he has to go and like save some of the dudes and like, yeah, people get yeah, stabbed. It's just a way, like, it is a ham-fisted attempt to define, so Daredevil's been through all this bullshit, and it's finally reached this, like, fiery, apocalyptic moment, this moment of revelation, and and so he's finally looking around at all these people, and, like, they help, they fight, they heal, we're in it together, united, united by, uh, and then uh, Daredevil, Daredevil was a symbol, and he, and that's when he, like, gets (laughs) magic powers back, right? Uh, this this idea that he gets it from the the from the symbol that he sort of himself has created. Uh, but the, you know they fight, they heal. They're they're you know like he he has a self conception that he fights with compassion. Uh, and one of the things about the early stage of this story is like he's fighting with compassion, but he's fighting stupidly. He's he's sort of lost and he hasn't. Uh, He's not sort of recognizing his symbolic nature, but I don't think that Daredevil is a symbol. No. Like I, I think that falls flat too. Uh, like it's a cool moment, but I just don't think of like the Batman. I, I, I do believe <laughs> the Batman is a symbol. At the very least, he's an iconic. He's an icon. You know, everybody knows what's going on with him. The Daredevil to call him a symbol and treat him as iconic is uh, is cheating almost. Uh, and pretending. Yeah, that's true. Daredevil sort of like under the, it should be under the radar to some extent. Yeah. But if you want, huh. you know, he's, he's trying to get the, dr- anyway, 
you were one thing absolutely I, I, I you reminded me the one thing i absolutely loved like this sort of idea of him working with compassion but when he in the, i think in the second issue he goes to the there's a doctor who's yeah. like he's yeah and the doctor's like you know like we've seen your work like we know like the pre- absolute precision that you do i love this idea that he has a signature to his violence that like medical professionals could recognize that was really interesting yeah yeah and like yeah, yeah that's none true that came, none of that came back and like yeah what does he say he's like uh, like people sometimes came away better uh and th- they would always heal uh they would always like come away better and I, I was like that's so cool and like honestly we don't see that uh in the issues that follow later like to my recollection like that no. for daredevil i mean even the ones you guys haven't read uh i don't even once he's sort of revived i think i think chip puts something on the table and forgets to pick it up again I forgot about it yeah 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 and the other thing I, the, in that tells the the sort of when he's back um the, the fuck yeah moment for me was when uh bullseye's like fuck another daredevil and he just like shoots at him and, and then he oh no he throws that knife and like matt catches it he's like nope just the real one that was awesome yeah it was on and then he does that like slow motion thing with all the bullet yeah and i oh. like we we get the um just seeing Matt fight and using his senses and like tracking the movement from like how he did. I don't like how crossbones got done in this though, James. <laughs> <laughs> crossbones. crossbones got done dirty. Yeah, I think so. I think that was bullshit. I think all those guys did all those like villains. It's like, that was the, that was another like little like loophole thing too, for it was that, uh, the, um, like those villains, like they, they fuck. How many people did they kill? They they fucked up a whole city block. Um, yeah. and uh, and they were like like obviously like dangerous sociopathic butchers and like what daredevils out there preaching a fucking Punisher? Like Jesus, you, you need him. Like if those are the kind of bad guys you're dealing with. Yeah. Although they didn't like they were told not to kill, and then um, it seemed I, like that was. Uh, a little contradictory. I don't see how you could cause that much yeah. mayhem without killing people. Well, Stiltman like just kind of like went rogue and was like, "Yeah, fuck that. I'm dropping bombs on these idiots." Stiltman, yeah, that yeah. was actually a good kill for for Matt as well. That was like probably one of my favorite like little fight sequences. Yeah, I liked Rhino. I liked uh, you know like his uh, like you know, I was supposed to wreck this church. I don't want to wreck this church. How would I just like tell you all to get out? You got ten minutes um but just like sort of like the the sort of varying responses to like being told to destroy a block in new york uh among these villains was kind of interesting and i love how uh like when matt goes into like zen mode and that you first of all you get that awesome speech where he's like you know the breathe there's an order to everything and it's like slow-mo bullet time uh and then he like leaps over rhino sticks yeah, a knife awesome. handle at his throat and chokes him to like to the point where he's like just like about to go brain dead he's like two minutes time to take it out yeah and that's how you deal with it. I, again like his, his control uh, zardsky and and Chichetto working together in the on the action on this unstoppable i just like but the scenario itself is so fucking ridiculous yeah uh, like, <laughs> like like especially the um they go to j jonah jameson or whatever and they're like oh i heard some stuff's going on downtown Oh, I don't see anything on the internet. Oh, it must not be happening. And like, <laughs> I don't know, guys. <laughs> I think I think the billowing smoke. Like we saw what New York looked like after 9/11. I think people would have noticed. You know, it's That's uh, true. But like I I see what like in, in that moment. Like I think Sardsky's throwing out a lot of ideas. Some of them are good. Some of them are baked. Some of them are half baked. And I think that's one of those half baked one where like it's about the value of newspapers to local events and the uh, machinations of billionaires uh, in the real estate market. You know, that's, that's what it's about. Um, yeah. and, but it's you're like, like it's not really there, like, but it's there. Well, even uh, this idea that you'd hire like mercenaries to destroy a block of New York city. And like, that's somehow a good strategy. This is like really hard to wrap your head around. I guess in a world where there's constant supervillain rampages, maybe, right? You know, like who's to say that those particular villains who never get beaten by superheroes ever and have never been sent to prison or interrogated 
uh, won't spill the beans. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it could have happened. It could have worked. It's not, like, completely wild for a superhero universe in which, like, cities get fucking rampaged. Um, but I, I would pick better people than them. It's like, true. Like, I could have done with a lot less owl. True. Mm. Yeah, he's a he, well, he's a for God, for better or for worse he's a major daredevil villain I don't understand it no I I, I don't even like uh, there's that's probably the best treatment I've seen and it, and it was terrible like there's no way there's no treatment you can give him I think this was a he, bad this was the worst one I've maybe seen in modern like I don't know contemporary accounts that I've seen, you know, like I, I, he was just wild, you know, uh, there was nothing calculating or interesting about him. He was just like, uh, there, well, there's nothing calculating or interesting about the character period. It's true. Did you know? Okay. He's an owl. For you, be a for you. Um, in the original X factor comics, there was uh there was a shadowy like X factor when they brought back the original five, um, and uh, I think it was written by Bob Layton and it was before uh, Louis Simonson took over. And um, they have this shadowy character in the background who was causing all this trouble for the, for Scott and Gene and Iceman and all those guys. And uh, that character was supposed to be revealed to be the owl. Oh, no. Um, but it was la- it was changed by Louis Simonson into a new character called Apocalypse. Um, so uh, a Interesting uh, origin story for Apocalypse. He could have been the owl. Um, wow. Yeah. I'm really glad that it wasn't. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise it would have like sucked. Balls, sucked. Just like yeah. It just, just would have like, sucked. It sucked anyway. Honestly, those comics are real bad. <laughs> <laughs> Even with Walt Simonson coming on in the art, that that is not a high point in comics in general. Unlike uh, this Daredevil comic, which is like a mid-level point you know it's not i i do fear that this is a high watermark for current marvel comics like this is the of the things that i've read like uh, immortal hulk is i think number one out of the things that i've read out of Mar- modern marvel and then i think this is number two and um it's the only thing that's really like grabbed me and sustained my attention for whatever that's worth you know like yeah i mean do- that's the uh yeah, there's a well. Yeah, I guess we're gonna get more into that in the hackathon. But I think there's a, I think there's a general, uh, I don't know, there's like a serving that's going on right now, and it's not a good serving. Mm. Um, yeah, that, I haven't read a ton. Uh, I still stand by um, Brian Posen's Deadpool uh, and Jen Jerry Dugan. I stand by uh, Fraction's Hawkeye run. It's phenomenal. But yeah, I, this was this was pretty well up there for me in, in terms of the modern Marvel that I read. Did you guys see that Rob Liefeld's drawing Deadpool? Oh no, I didn't. See like that. end to end. Is he buff? It's horrible. It's, I'm it's look it up right worse now. than Youngblood. I I I, uh, I picked it up and I flipped through and I I I shocked and appalled. It. It's some type of a Deadpool crossover thing, and I just put it right back. I I, I was so sh- shook up. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, this is awful. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's don't, him. Don't he's, be, doing, he's done the whole book. Yeah. Is he is he writing it? I I don't I think so. I think he's writing and drawing. Okay, well, that's guaranteed not to be funny. And Dare to, uh, uh, Deadpool needs to be funny. Okay. I'll I'll. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I'll let you. I'll chew on that. But. Yeah. I'll, I, oh, I was gonna say, Chris. The, the like, I'll I'll pick up your yeah that Hawkeye run. I that's 2012. That that counts oh, uh, for the art for the art alone. We should look For at sure, someday. yeah, yeah, with Aha Art. But I was also yeah. going to say Matt Fraction's run on uh, Iron Fist with Ed Brubaker. That's very good. Uh, I I have a recollection of that being very good, and it was it was around that time as well. And also, it's got Travel Foreman and David Aha Art Art. Uh, but that's 2006 to 2009. Like, oh man, that's again, I feel I'm feeling old, feeling fucking old here. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a long uh-huh. stretch. Yeah. Anyway, I think that just goes to show like the, you know, it could it could show a couple things. It could show that I'm not plugged into modern Marvel and I'm just attracted to the, uh, you know, the marquee names that I'm used to. Um, And that's one of the reasons that the hackathon is going to occur, because like maybe we're going to find someone in there that like, wow, you know, we should we should check this out. 
Um, and yeah, and also it's an opportunity to like give the current landscape an honest shake, uh, and and see see what's up because like I have some prejudices and I I don't I'd like to I'd like to test them you know I, I have having selected these books though I can tell you that many of my prejudices have been confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> not surprised. Yeah. I gotta say I'm probably not gonna I'm probably not gonna turn my nose up at Chip Zardsky the way I did previously. So no, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna, like I've read uh, I was telling you guys about a public domain book. I think it's pretty good. It's uh, it's not superhero fair, but it's about superheroes. Uh, he's got like, what what else ongoing does he have right now? Something called Newber. Uh, in in this run on Superman's or a Batman. Well, actually, did sorry. Any any additional thoughts about his like Batman opening or I just sent that as like sort of a oh, sample. But. I thought it was quite good actually. Um, I yeah. really liked uh, the Penguin's motivation in it, like where he's uh, like he's kind of publicly saying like I'm gonna kill these billionaires. Anyone who's got like I think it was like over five million dollars who inherited that is on my mm-hmm. list. Uh, it's sort of like playing this populist thing. And like, Batman's like, what are you talking about? You're born into money. Um, but then like his, as he's confronted, he's like dying. He's like, he's just angry that like they get to live and he, he's dying. And like, it's just this, like this rage that he's enacting. I thought that was pretty cool. The, I thought, um, well, I was gonna remind me of the Kingpin. Uh, it reminded me of the same sort of story beat, you know, like the idea that like they never, they never recognized me, you know, like even though I was one of them. Um, anyway, go on. Yeah. I also like the, um, uh, like there was a, a dicey moment when, uh, when Robin gets shot through the neck and you're like, yeah. oh shit. Yeah. That was, that was intense. Yeah. And the art's very good to have your, um, Jimenez, I think that's who the artist is there. Uh, I think I think it was sufficiently dynamic. I think that's like you trust me. I, I that story falls off when it like it focuses on that robot that shows up at the end. Right. It's, but it's all about how Batman's like lost his way, and so it's some sort of like fail safe device that Batman created if he's too uh, discombobulated. What? Yeah, the robot's got to get him. The golem's uh, like Batman's invention. Yeah. Uh, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it was kind of it was kind of boring and ho hum. I I I think I read issue one twenty six before, and I I don't think I'd actually ever read one twenty five. Um, and I was disappointed slash uh happy that I was I was disappointed that I liked it, but I was also happy that I liked it. Uh, disappointed because I had written off the series and continue to write it off. Um. But happy because I was like, okay, good. There was there was a kernel of something here. That's fair. Any, yeah. Yeah. All right. So well, like, hit yeah. and miss, hit and miss that chip part, Zarsky. Uh, yeah, but I got a I got a sense that he he's uh probably more of a hit guy than we'd like. Uh, but I he's think so too. Yeah, I, I check other stuff out. Yeah, I I just don't think he's ever going to be like one of the. He's just not going to be one of the greats. He's he's just going to be like showing up and hitting balls uh, out into left field, and no one's going to catch it. And then he's going to get some runs, and it'll be good. Now all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck. 